Hello, everyone. We are, uh, I guess we're live on Facebook. This is cool. I've never done li Facebook Live yet, so this is fun. Um, I'm sure people will hopefully have opportunity to ask questions and things. So um, I will keep that chat open to see if people want to ask questions. But this is, um, we have a little uh, just ca accountability group, uh, kind of peer peer business building group, um, and we're calling it Future Faction. My name is Mario, I am from Hawaii, and uh, I run a little studio called Made by Maker. Um, I do brand strategy and design. Um, I, am, I am also joined by Asha, who runs MindZ Design. Uh, MindZ Studio or Design? It's a MindZ Design Studio in San Diego. Um, and then Sagonia Panu is in the UK and she runs Vero Design. Um, hello, Sagonia, how are you? Hello. Good to see you, a little shy, so. Um, so we just wanted to kind of get together and, and talk a little bit about how businesses can innovate during this time. Um, I think we have some varied um, we have some varied industries that we work with. I work with food and beverage. I work with um, the fitness industry, the wellness industry. Um, and um, Sagonia, you work with uh, the building industry, the construction industry, real estate. Um, and Asha, you work with food, beverage, wellness, and uh, some entrepreneurs as well, right? Just kind of just general like self-starting entrepreneurs um so let's let's just talk about let's just kind of like start free-flowing like what do we what do we feel is you know during this time there's some there's some it's kind of a crazy time in the world right now with this virus thing going on and i don't want to spend too much time talking about that but i think i think there's a it's a really interesting time where the world is really focused on um quieting down and everything's shutting down and people are losing clients and jobs and everything else um and so how can we how can we help them innovate during this time? What do you think? Yeah, um, I think we cannot uh, react to the situation what's going on right now in the market, but how we respond to it and how to act about it. Like particularly from I have seen last two weeks with clients, they are frustrated, they are fearful, and their anxiety is shoot up. So how as a brand a strategist, uh, we try to always give them clarity and problem solving solutions. So we will share how we did with our clients and how can we help them, especially I've been serving small businesses and entrepreneurs in food and wellness industry to make their businesses into brands. They are scared to launch their products right now. They are scared to go and invest more in the market right now. And how do we help them? So. We are developing some innovative ideas, like you can go on the virtual platform and you can also talk to their tribe and really genuinely listen to them right now and connect with them on their emotions, like what pains they are going, pain points they have right now and not to always see the buying or the money perspective, all the time, but really genuinely connect with them and feel them what they are going to be. And that's a human level I'm trying to connect. How are you feeling, Mario, with your clients and Sagonia? Sagonia, why don't you go? Yeah. I also think it's a good time for um, everyone, but particularly big companies, to share resources. I think you'll build up your credibility and anything like government information out there if big companies are sharing it, it shows like they've got their client's best interest at heart. And um, just like even apps, management, softwares, anything like that, government information, I've seen some of the companies share it and it's, it's really good touch and it really shows that like, they care. So. Yeah, I think there's, there's a huge opportunity to do, to do your business differently in a completely different way in, a, in an unexpected way um, but I think the problem is that you know our clients don't know what that unexpected way may be right um, it's it's a it's a catch-22 where, where they're they're very much um, wanting to know um, what to do right now but they don't know what to do so how can they how can they get to you know how can they understand what that means 
So we were just discussing how we are helping our yes. clients and all the people uh, who are feeling fearful about launching their businesses or products and current situations, like they don't have more foot traffic in the restaurants yeah. or automobile stores or in the food industry or well as gym is closing down. So they are learning new ways to do it and we yeah. are proposing some tips and tricks on that. Let me, let me ask a question to us. <clears throat> with everyone pretty much being forced to shut down right now how can businesses innovate uh, so i proposed uh, recently to my client like he has a store physically on the retail space so uh, proposing them to go virtually online and focus more selling on online take a leverage of social media email newsletter and genuinely connect with the client. And we are making a new strategies how to go more on e-commerce side. And some of the businesses cannot go to the e-commerce side right now or online they cannot sell because some products are like that, suppose. So we are telling them to connect with their future customers, but at least connect with them on social media and on newsletters or any virtual platform. Uh, so they can make the future client, but what happens is right now they connect with their tribe and they can give them solution and feel connected. They can propose them for the future after Corona, what they can have any deals or promotions, they can offer them that. So that's what I just did. How about you, Sargonia or Mario? I think right now there's a lot of online business networking events as well. Mm -hmm. and you and connect with people that you wouldn't usually get to be in the same room with um, globally even um, so like recently I contacted one of the ladies um, that runs networking events and I said to her where can I go to connect with more real estate developers and she mm -hmm. said well there's a lot of events now that were networking events in London that have gone live online that you can just get involved in so mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity for people to connect with um, globally that you would not see otherwise. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I think, <clears throat> I mean, I think those are all amazing ideas. I think changing the way you offer your service can be a benefit, not only now, but, but in the long run, right? So yes, going online, <clears throat> excuse me, going online, um, getting, getting a different focus for your business, like um, I've heard of some um, restaurants not only offering um, their regular food delivery or changing the menu so it's more specific and it's more um, easily read readily available, but also they're providing dry goods. Like people are le like can't find rice at the store, they can't find pasta, they can't find they can't find these things. So how can um, how can we think outside the box, but still within our industry to continue to provide value for our tribe. And I think, I think what you were saying, Sagonia, is really important. Like pushing into the community that you serve right now is going to be vastly more beneficial to your business, not only now, but in the future. Because this is, for me, and you guys can speak to this, like I think this is completely this is, this is prep time for future because right now you're laying the groundwork um, for, for what's going to happen after this whole thing, kind of the dust settles and everything, right? So like maybe what, are, what, are, what do we think some, some ways that people can, can really push into their tribe or, or discover their tribe or, or connect with their tribe a little bit more um, during this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, the virtual meetings are kicking like, People are scared how for the employees and how to get the innovative ideas also. Um, so virtual meeting are kicking in and we proposed uh, like um, one of my client had an experience and he doesn't know how to sell it. So we said your experience can be transformed as an e-course e or some training for the businesses who don't have the experience in that. Like and launch that e-course on online platform so you can start having the passive income because they were panicking about the cash flows also. So that was the idea. He take it and he's working on his book writing, which was like his long list. He wanted to make uh, 
like uh, training modules for his internal company in hotel industry, how to train my staff or how to uh, train my uh, manager. So those kind of things which he wants to boost his cultural in, internally, which was too much pending. Now he started kicking into like a small e-courses now. Yeah, that's huge. That's awesome. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, a question or, or a comment that Edwin, Edwin is watching. Thanks, Edwin and Van and Camille. Um, on Facebook. So um, I just wanted to add, just say, he said, um, buy a dinner plate to go and offer two free toilet papers. <laughs> I, don't, I, I love that idea in theory, but maybe it will give the wrong, um, the wrong message that the food is going to make you have a need to go to the bathroom more. No, I'm just kidding. But that's a great, that's a great idea. Like, like offering other goods and services as just a bonus for um, for what you're, what you're already providing, right? And it's an unexpected thing. It's a delightful thing. Um, or how so, about was the sustainable idea on that? It was well, the question from Edwin. Yeah, Edwin. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. instead of toilet paper, what is a sustainable way to survive? Like, I grew up in India, and we yes. never use toilet paper, and I don't use it here too. In my family, we always have showers. Yeah. So free. So free bidet with any purchase over fifty dollars. <laughs> It's just why people are picking up <laughs> toilet paper. Why can't it's, they over something more? Use the shower. It's, it's a, more hygiene and more clean. And see, that's a different. That's a different way to think about the problem, right? Like, mm -hmm. how can we? How can we operate more like the rest of the world? Like, like literally, like there are billions of people in the world that do not use these things that we call necessities in the Western world, right? Um, and I, I think it's it's more a. Uh, it's more uh, an American thing. I think in Europe it's different, and and even in speak to the UK a little bit, like um, you know, Sagonia, like like is is that a necessity? I've been to I've been all over Europe. It's it's kind of a necessity, right? It's like people are worried about like you know cleaning themselves after they go to the restroom, but it's really funny because I, I I get messages from people all the time in India, and Nepal, and and in Asia, they're like, what are you guys talking? Like, why are you, why are you hoarding paper? That's ridiculous. Why don't you, why don't you spend time on like, like supplies that actually mean something for your, <laughs> for your, for your life, right? Like take a shower. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But even just, even that idea of switching their mindset and like, like, look, this is something that you think you need and you don't like, you don't need that. You, you have access to water. You can figure it out, you know, and not to not to bring make this whole thing about poop or whatever, but um, you know there there are ways to to think about um, our problems differently. And I think as designers, I think that's the that's that's a powerful thing that we we get to do for our clients, right? Um, so what are some other things that we're thinking about? Like um, Sagonia, I love I love the idea of like virtual um, virtual networking. Like have you have you been to any yet? Or lately or are you are you gearing up to go to some i've signed up to a few so i'll see how that goes and um, i was also thinking like not just networking even virtual offices like there are employees that can't work at home yeah. there's a lot of like struggle working by themselves but even creating like a space where it's like an online cafe or a virtual office where the employees that can't work on their own they can you know interact with other employees like they would in an office space. Yeah. And I think yeah. good this is like you're saving a lot of travel time. So everyone's <laughs> going to work like at least two hours less. Like the travel time, you're cutting two hours out of your life to spend with your family. So there are good things with the, with the crime. Yeah, I think there's there's far more benefits than we think there are for us having to like like you know, shelter in place or whatever. Um, a lot of us are, <clears throat> a lot of us are, are, as designers, we're used to doing remote work. Like we can, we, I, I can completely conduct my business completely remote and I do. Um, the only, the hard part is like, you know, meetings, but there's a, this is the solve for that right now, right? This is even the solve for a virtual cafe or a virtual office, like set up a Zoom call, like everybody gets on and, it's not like you have to talk all the time, just have your camera on. And if you have something to say, then cool, awesome, awesome. But it's just, I think it's the comfort that we see, we feel just having people there and knowing that we're not alone, right? And I think that that loneliness, 
the isolation part of of the self quarantine thing is freaking people out. And I know it freaks you know it probably freaks extroverts out more than it does introverts because introverts are like my life has not changed at all, you know. So, um, but uh, you know, what what are some things that that what are some other things? I think like doing a, doing a zoom call, like I I'm, I'm setting up zoom calls with all my friends and we're like having drinks and we're having happy hour. We're like eating and we're just, we're just, we're going to, you know, there's, I saw my friend, my friend's gym is doing like a, it's called the best night ever. Um, shout out to Eric um, for that idea. Um, they're doing a, they're doing a pizza game zoom night. So, so they're like, everybody's, everybody's having their own pizza. Everybody's, going to play the same game right together like i don't know what game they're going to play but but in their gym they have a community and they're going to gather together because they miss each other they miss seeing each other um i know the gym that i'm I'm, i coach at we're we're setting up you know online workouts and we're going to be doing zoom for them if they want to interface with us if they just miss being around the workout space uh, we're going to do live you know live workouts we're going to do recorded workouts we're going to do all this other stuff just to kind of keep people connected um, and I think that's just a, a great way. Actually, yeah. there's an app called House Party as well. Have you have you seen that? There's an app called House Party. So my, you can all your family. <laughs> my wife, my wife just used that last night for like uh, this this scripture reading thing she does with with her her girlfriends in church. Like they couldn't find, they didn't think they could use Zoom for that, um, so they used House Party, and they had a good time. They were just like all together and talking, and it's like. Like I, I first heard about it from my from my my goddaughter in, in California. She, she, they're like, oh, she does house party. I was like, oh, what's that? And she's like, oh, they just get together on their computer and they all hang out at this at this virtual house party thing. And I was like, well, you know, you got to you got to do what you got to do, you know. And, and it's really super fun. Um, it is a DIY party. Do you, uh, like bring your own drink, like bring coffee or something. And yeah. with parents, like I'm being a mom, it is. Definitely, my time is more elevated with the kids' t- uh, teaching job. Also, we have to do at home because kids are home, so that's a challenge. But I don't see it as a bad part because I can get to discipline them how to do the work and learning method differently, and respect your time and my time too. So that is nice thing. But we can do the uh, bring your own drink or empowering teachers how to use the virtual world. So. I gave the training about the Zoom and virtual world to teachers. So now they yeah. are taking classes in a different room. So they have their block set of time to do their teaching work. So I can also work. It's but so it's good. Virtual things are so blessings. Uh, if we don't have this technology, imagine what would be in this situation if we can't talk to it. So everything is for good reason. I know I feel bad about the situation, what is happening. But if we are taking it in a positive aspect, the mindful way, the yeah. guys are doing this. Because yeah. Actually, I feel the community is coming more together, human to human. They're caring. Like I didn't know my clients' children before, or what the problem they are going through, and now they are talking out to me. Like on email, we are sending video messages instead of typing because it's a lot of content and internet noise going on. So when they are doing the video call, they are seeing each other's body language. They are seeing each other's expressions. They're seeing the energy is different instead of just writing boring text messages or WhatsApp hundred messages or the emails inbox is overflowing with the newsletter. So I love the Soapbox. Uh, I use it. It is a great app. Like you can talk to client and email them with the video. There are online book clubs we have started with the creative people and entrepreneur like Michael Burrell. He did his launching his book, so he spoke about it. So. If you have extra time, like if you are not there and I'm, I'm looking for extra time, <laughs> you know, Mario, how's that? I don't, like, know, what, I don't know what extra time is. What, what, is, is, that, time? what does that mean? <laughs> or maybe in the bathroom, if I get to it, that's extra time. If you have. But if you have it, go, like we have a book club. AIGA launched the entire sites for the creative people. Uh, you can have the other readers count. You have a uh, book club online. You can talk to those entrepreneurs. They are doing they are doing business development courses online. So there are lots of tools and how as a strategies, we can see different things and we are helping clients. Like today morning on the pro group, we create a game and go internally and figure out different combinations of your hobbies and things and think different business models, right? 
So what creative games you can play with your team members or your family too. Even your kids are in pain. They are not able to go out and play. They are not meeting their friends. So how can you change that mindset and how can yeah. you give clarity? So that's a huge take a benefit of what you got. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to go ahead, Sukanya, sorry. I'm just going to say that um, I don't know if any, um, people might not know that Amazon's uh, Prime is offering, sorry, Amazon Kindle is offering under 14 year olds free membership or something with all that's um, cool that's awesome yeah there's a there's a whole list i'm gonna i'll i'll get I, my uh, sister-in-law sent me a really amazing list of of all these awesome things that families that that are available to families right now um, which is really cool so um edwin also said um calling previous clients i think we touched on this a little bit but and just simply checking on how they're doing as humans right like i think being more humans uh Asha, you you mentioned that this is this is kind of bringing us closer together which is funny um, it, it seems it seems opposite, but I think I think you're right. I think it's bringing us closer together because we are we're so. This is the only way we can connect, and so we're 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 kind of being more more forward and thinking like, hey, you know, what? let's in, instead of like texting somebody now, like, hey, let's jump on a call. That's that's what my um, my response is right now, and we do this, and we get so much more said done accomplished and even just heard and just just being able to like spend time with each other it refreshes each other right so um um my friend uh, camille out in florida says that he started some work related meetings in alt space vr which is kind of cool I, I think it's an idea a great idea so you're like you're in vr and you're, you're working but you're like kind of in a in a in a different you're actually in an office with with other people that you're interacting with which is kind of crazy and spooky at the same time um and then uh edwin i think um <laughs> yes extra time doesn't exist and uh friday friday virtual happy hour i think i'm down let's figure it out let's make it happen um <laughs> um yeah I, I i kind of uh i was talking to a friend uh this week and same thing. He had to let go like 20 people and they have a, they have a distillery here on Island. Um, and it was, he was just like wretched because of it. Um, but they did it in a way that they could actually keep like keep them hired and keep giving them benefits. So that's, they're taking, they're doing as much as they can to keep taking care of their, their, their family, which I thought was amazing. But um, I was like, Hey man, you know, all these awesome bartenders, why don't you guys get all to get, all get together and like, and like, like stream it like people would totally be into that and they did it the other day and it was awesome it was it was fantastic and so it was cool to see like people just immediately taking heart and say like, hey this is a great idea let's do this i'm going to do this with my other friends because we have a different audience and we can connect in a different way you know people i think want to spend it's funny because this i think this is a, a special time right now that people really are realizing that they do want to spend time with each other clients with you know with other people and and friends with friends i think this is a special time where we're actually forcing ourselves to do that or being forced to do that in a different way and it's it is bringing us together that's a that's the purpose of our existence right like why we would live because we want to connect with each other that's the purpose of life is much bigger than money and all of the things. So connecting is the best way. But I wanted to reflect back on your thought, Mario. He has to fire like 20 people. And I was um, reading through the Marriott uh, CEO was saying the other day that they had all the, all the hotels are lost down. And my client in the hotel industry, when I met him first word, the first sentence he said, they get down with 90% business. We don't know how to maintain our staff right now. So they, all the CEO, and I really shout out to these positive leaders of the industry, they stopped taking salary for a year. They decided that we cannot take salary as a CEO right now because they have gone to accommodate more. The executives members, they started taking 50% cut in their salary in the hotel industry on the leader team, especially in the Marriott right now, they are doing it. So I see the leadership really genuinely taking care for their business, even the Amazon. He's really hiring new people, but he's completely focusing on how to change the logistics, transports, can we bringing teams together? So I really want to mention this, that is there an opportunity to innovate something new? Do the virtual meetings, 
do the brainstorm ideas you know, and be transparent with your team that what you can do and what you cannot do so because their life, their children life is dependent on that. The transparency with the team really make them feel more comfortable and brainstorm the ideas together as the strategies we always do with our client. We brainstorm and innovate new idea. We learned in Martin Mara too, right? So how do we innovate idea and maybe some of the team member can bring a new idea for a website or a packaging or a product which can innovate to sell online or to connect with the tribe or you have like i generally work with marketing directors for the packaging and food industry they have a pipeline for one year plan that mm. this 10 product has to go this next year so how about you shift your vision or adjust your vision instead of this product maybe this product is better to sell online yeah. right and then change your logistic amazon is giving like tying up with the grubhub and all the online um delivery services so which product can be more better logistically to send this so that kind of shift on thinking also will help to keep your team and not to just do the layoff so i highly encourage to brainstorm new ideas and innovate some new ideas there are tons of exercise and we all are offering end of the call if you feel free to call us from our website and we'll be sharing our information and we are here to help you and genuinely help you it's not the sales call this is at all you can see our setup is very casual but generally we want to help you and get some clarity if you need some brainstorming please connect to us yeah i think we're available obviously and we have a huge i have a huge network now we all do a worldwide network which is which is i mean some of the brightest people I've ever known in my life, which is saying a lot because I've known some pretty smart people, but the people that I know now are, are as a, as a group completely outshine um, anyone I've ever met in my life. And I, I think they're, they're, you guys are, are definitely, you know, Asha and Sigonia are part of that, that huge, amazing group that I know now. Um, but let's, let's just talk about maybe one thing, one assumption, right. That people are take are, are thinking about right now and let's reverse it a little bit and and help people think about it differently okay so what what's one assumption that's happening right now um in the world that that people with businesses may have let's just shoot let, throw some stuff out and we'll pick one to kind of reverse it and kind of play off of that like our little workshop go Sagonia. i talked a lot <laughs> yeah, i want to hear from Sagonia a little bit add on to the last point before we move on from that you know um how asha was saying it's time to like connect with your clients I just want to say it's time to connect with your employees too yeah it's time to, like business owners shouldn't think of solving these problems or going through these issues by themselves it's really time to jump on get your team involved ask them how what they think we could do and I think just if you work at it together you'll go back as a much stronger team and you'll all have the same vision and purpose and that could really help, like, that could be a big positive out of this crisis as well for your companies. Yeah, I think, so let's just, maybe that's the assumption right now. Like, the assumption is that we have to self-isolate, right? We mean, mean, meaning we have to be by ourselves. But I think the reverse of that assumption is we don't have to be by ourselves, even though we're, we're, we have to be, we have to segregate ourselves from the population we don't have to segre segregate ourselves socially. I think this is the time to be more social in, in every way possible. And I think to your point, Sigonia, doing all we can to check on those that we work with intimately, our employees, our employers, like there are people that, that have you know, higher ups, be genuine in, in just being a human right now and check in on their well being as a human being. Um, don't, don't, don't try to get business. Don't try. Like I, I, I had four calls on Monday and they were all amazing um, for different reasons. And two of them completely were not the call that I expected to have. They were turning in. They, they, I, I thought they were, we were just going to connect and they, they may possibly be business opportunities later, but because I took the time to really like deeply connect with these people um, they were open to, 
me helping them further their business right now, even in this crisis. And they're like looking, they're looking to innovate and, and improve right now. Like, but that connection point, um, Bob says distant, but not separate. And I love that. Um, that connection point right now is, is vastly more important than I think it, it has ever been because it shows a deeper sense of care. Yeah, definitely. And I also see this social distance word is overly used. Yeah. Social distance is, I think it's not the right term right now. Social meeting is right word. Uh, physical distance, yeah, because of virus problem. We need a physical distance of six feet, yes, but virtual is open. Social distance should be not there. We can connect on social with any community, any people around you. So it's time to socially group again, regroup it, and be real with each other. I think this is the best opportunity to show up your face and talk to people and really genuinely hear or listen to them what they're going through. People yeah. want to talk more, but people want to get heard too. Yeah, I think being heard is more is more something that that people are desiring more and more. Um, Bob had a really good assumption. I don't know if we want to kind of move on to this, but Bob's Bob's assumption um, is is great and it's a big one. Um, that his his assumption is that people have that business will come back in x amount of time. And how might we deal with the uncertainty around this? Because we don't actually know when business can start resuming as usual, right? Um, so what, what do you think are some ways that we can deal with the uncertainty of when business can, re, can resume? I think uncertainty is always a part of business. We never had a certainty, but running a business, for, like it's always a challenge like you have to start doing new things and thing and we learned that in Martin Minara's workshop it's organically grow it's like a water and how business or brands take the shapes so it's a like a liquid branding or li liquid brand like how organically according to the market situation and according to your tribe you are crafting your business or crafting your brand it's not like earlier days, those traditional model, what knowledge you had, what experience have, and you are running the business on top of that. I think it's flipped completely as now what your tribe wants, what your audience wants, and that's how you are running business. So right now the market and the tribe wants some different pain points they have. So we have to shift our business and let it grow organically and not to think about the end point, but keep growing step by step. That's my approach. What do you say, Sagon and Mario? Well, I think <laughs> I think it's a good time to actually, before thinking about how to resume, it's a good time to appreciate where you've got to and how you got here. Like, it's not that wherever you got to in your business, it wasn't that easy. There would have been different struggles while you mm -hmm. you, know, while you were setting up your business, while you were trying to find new clients, you were trying to do everything, and then you reached a certain edge. Um, certain stage in your business and it's just another hurdle same as that and you'll bounce back i'm not mm -hmm. sure how how you could do that but i suppose every business is different every market's at different place so unless you sat down with the person and went through what they're going through and how it's affected them personally you wouldn't really know you wouldn't answer couldn't answer that for each person but i think it's a good time to appreciate how you, where you are and how you got here and then make plans about how you could solve the problems that you're going through right now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little stab at this, um, and <clears throat> just you just using what some of the the words you were using, <clears throat> and just kind of summing up a little bit. Um, I see how you guys watching on Facebook. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, uh, so what I'm hearing is um, right now to to overcome the assumption of that work may may continue as usual at X amount of time, what's, you know, how can we overcome that assumption? Um, I think, A, we need to connect deeply with our tribe or our audience, right? Businesses need to, this is the time to connect with your audience. This is, this is the most important thing that you can do right now, not making more stuff necessarily, not not just doing out of the sense of doing or building out of the sense of building, but take the time to 
what Sigonia was saying, be present and know where you are right now, know what you are capable of and know how far you've come. You are not the same person that you started your business with, right? And then the other, the other side is, <clears throat> the other side is um, being present and then presently pushing in to your community. What are their needs right now and how may you serve that community? right? I think that is going to build where you're going next. So it doesn't really, who knows when, when, when the, the next time we're going to be able to, you know, do business as usual. I think what we're saying is be present in the now. Don't worry about when, start building for when, right? Prepare your fields, basically prepare your fields for what's to come. We've talked about this a little while ago, right? Right guys, like if you're a farmer and you're wishing for rain, you're praying for rain and you don't do anything for when the rain comes, then are you really having the faith to, to know that it's going to rain? Or you can actually spend the downtime to prepare your fields for what's to come because you know, at some point business will resume. It's just not going to be as usual. It's not going to be the same as it was before. And I think if we do, if we're proactive now in pushing into our community, listening to our community and, um, and activating our community, this is going to give us a better business model to do whatever we do for them in this next phase of business, because our next phase of business is going to be completely different. It doesn't matter where you are, what you do, it's going to be completely different for what's after this. And I'm sorry, my kids are waking up. So things are going to get a little loud. No, I completely agree. Just to be a part of their plans right now. Just to be a part and be with them. Like I read down that um, creating some value in the crisis is a total win-win. Just be with them. And when Sagonia was saying one story reflected in my brain, I read in Steve Jobs' book that you cannot connect the dots for the future, but when you look back, those dots are connecting. When he got fired from his job, he didn't know what's going to come, but he wrote that, that doing fixer next time and then finding wife and all the things, you, you can only connect the thoughts when you see what was happened for reason and how the buildup happened to exist at the, this level, right? So be a part of organically grow and have faith. Have, have faith in your life, in your karma, in whatever you believe, in your God, whatever. Have faith and think positively that it's going to get better and better. China is already saying there's no more new cases and they are uh, working on it. The hospitals are closed. Some clinics are closing down because they are not having new virus. And how can you be smart and learn the, from this situation? That can I have more suppliers or can I have a different channels now to get or not to depend on one person for my business, but you can have a different supply China, uh, channels now. What lessons we are learning from the situation? Like my bus uh, any business model collapsing on cash flows or something. So write down those points, think through it, and be mindful about if this kind of situation, 9-11, we, we didn't know it's coming. We didn't know this coronavirus is coming. Uncertainty is going to be always there in this life. So what steps we can do to prevent this. So write it down. This is the time if you have it, write it down so you can prevent in advance and be smart about it and learn from this, right? Mm -hmm. That's my two cents. That's, right. I think, that, I think that's, that's the right attitude to have, right? I mean, what, what are we, where have we come? Where are we right now? And how can we use this time to benefit us in the future? And I think we had some really actionable things like build community, push into your community, listen to your community and use, use what they're going through to help them in this next phase, you know, because I think if the more we can become helpful, the more we can be, have that, have that servant heart of, um, of, of pushing into who we can help and how we can help them right now is going to benefit everything in the, in the future. Um, Bob says, Ash's two cents is worth a whole lot more. And I, I, I agree with him. What do you mean? You said, that's my two cents. And I think in Bob saying that's worth a whole lot more than two cents. <laughs> You're yeah. so sweet, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> we miss 
seeing him physically like we met last month. But I know. I miss I miss Bob. I miss I miss yeah. Him. Yeah. Um, so great. anyway, guys, um, I think, yeah, I think that's good. I, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank good. you for joining us guys. Um, so that was, I think that was kind of like our wrap up. So, um, listen to your clients, push into your communities, build community right now, listen to them and be proactive in, 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 in serving that community. Um, for Facebook, we're going to, huh? positive. No, I'm sorry to interrupt, but let's no, no, go ahead. Positive action for everyone. Go for it. Yeah. So um, with the gratitude, like we are light today. Yeah. And, we are and our people, I know community is going through certain things, but write down your gratitude. It is a big thing for your mindset. And what's the one gratitude you want to share, Mario, for today? One gratitude I want to share today is um, those screaming voices in the back. Um, my, my little, my little ones that, that drive me nuts every day that completely <laughs> stop, stop me from doing anything productive for my business. Um, it's a special time right now. They're little, I love them so much. And I'm so excited that I get to have, um, these little, these moments right now to, to play with them and to love them and to, to be genuinely just a dad right now. And it's, it's really special time. We learned so much from you, Mario. You give so much value having some background distraction. <laughs> <laughs> you are me, and you are truly inspirational and positive. Oh, thank, so you. thank you for doing it. Sagonia, what's your gratitude? I was going to say spending time with family, but Maria took mine. <laughs> I was going to say you work so hard to kind of like have time to spend with your family. And now it's like everyone's got the opportunity to stay at home and be with their kids and spend time with their kids. So, and with your family in general. And I feel like we're doing a lot more video calls with family, which you don't usually get time for. And everyone wants to jump on and speak to each other and at the same time. So it's been like, you know, there's loads of positives to this. Right. It's okay. We can have the same thing that we're happy about. We're, we can we can be thankful for the same thing. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'm thankful for you guys. I love I love our our conversations. I think we're 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 encouraging each other to get better, and um, I'm I'm very thankful for our friendship. Um, but anyway, this is Mario. This is Sagonia. This is Asha. Thank you guys. We are calling yeah. ourselves um, yeah. Future Faction and uh, Aloha. Faction. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys later. Um, and that's it for our live stream. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.